Many people have been led to believe that, although the Bible is full of interesting stories, its history is mythological and made up, with no archaeological support. This series is dedicated to those who need help dislodging that dubious claim. On our last episode, we found that according to new chronology configurations, Amenemhat III is the most likely candidate for the pharaoh of Joseph in the Bible. So it seems that Amenemhat had at least two viziers serving him when he was pharaoh. The first is a guy named Samantu. There's not a lot known about him. There may be a statue of him, uh, this black granite statue in the temple of Karnak. It could be of Samantu. It's dedicated by the next vizier, and the next vizier's name is Anku, and he's a much more likely candidate for Joseph. Um, it, Samantu may have trained or mentored Anku, but whatever the case is, Anku appears to follow Samantu and appears to be the most famous royal servant of the period. Some think that they could be a father-son pair, but there's no evidence of blood relation. Anku is known as Anku, observer of the fields. Contemporary documents refer to granaries of Anku around Egypt, um, and these granaries were still called granaries of Anku well into the 13th dynasty. Anku was also a contemporary with the state-run organization called the Department of the People's Giving. This guy also apparently had a cult following, with a lot of people naming their kids after him, especially Asiatics. The Brooklyn Papyrus lists domestic servants of an Egyptian estate in Thebes. There are 30 male slaves, and four are named Anku. Five are named after Anku's son and successor, Vizier Raseneb. Actually, Anku had two sons, and they both served as viziers after Anku's death. And eight more have compound names with Anku in it. This papyrus dates to the reign of Pharaoh Sobekhotep III, after both Anku's and his son's death, but not very long after. Why are all these servants named after viziers? Texts at this time refer to the Amu, Asiatic, Kui, who is called Raseneb, and another Anku, who is called the Asiatic. So, were these Asiatic slaves named after folk heroes of their own people who happened to be elevated to high rank during the time of the pharaoh of Egypt's famine? Anku also has a remarkably long period in office. Anku is a late 12th dynasty and early 13th dynasty vizier who became the premier servant of pharaoh during both a time of great abundance and then great famine, but who also happened to be Asiatic and became a hero to Asiatic servants in subsequent generations. Incidentally, at the same time in Egypt's history, a new settlement appears in the Nile Delta region, a city called Varis. The Austrian excavators uncovered a Syrian home at the heart of the first layer of this settlement, which according to these archaeologists started around 70 to 100 people. This foreign design didn't match Egyptian styles at all, but did match Syrian designs, the homeland of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Interestingly, it appears that this home was demolished, and a palace was erected on top of it. This palace was much more Egyptian in character, built for a high-status individual. Its bedroom was large and contained a raised platform representing one of the largest beds in the ancient world. Two wings with suites of rooms were added later, possibly for this person's sons and wives and kids. In the garden outside of this palace, the Austrian team found large brick-vaulted graves, eleven of them. Most had pits with donkey skeletons, which was not in Egyptian practice, and a couple of sheep, the long-haired Syrian variety, identifying these men as shepherds. They were also buried with fine bronze daggers and duckbill or fenestrated axes. In addition to these eleven vaulted graves, there stood one other much more special tomb, making twelve total. This special grave, however, was a small pyramid. Only highly honored individuals like pharaohs and their wives got pyramids, but this guy wasn't a pharaoh, and he wasn't even Egyptian. But they found the remains of a larger-than-life statue of the deceased. The statue remains indicated heavy damage, but you can still tell that the skin was painted yellow, and his hair was painted red, and this is how Egyptians draw northerners or Semites. He's also holding a throw stick, which is how Egyptians drew Asiatics, and he is also apparently wearing a very fancy, colorful robe. Is this Asiatic man with eleven close relatives, who is also apparently the leader of a settlement of Asiatics in the Nile Delta region, the same man as the vizier to the pharaoh of the Great Famine? 
Dorothy Arnold is a leading art historian and curator of the Metropolitan Museum in New York. She carefully examined the workmanship and style of the statue and compared it to the statues of Amenemhat III. She came to the conclusion that the statue of this important Asiatic figure came from the royal workshops of Hawara, connecting it closely to the royal court of Amenemhat III, the pharaoh of famine, and likely the pharaoh under whom the royal vizier Anku served. So it is likely that this is a statue of the Asiatic vizier named Anku. Why would I connect this man to Joseph, besides the fact that they lead almost identical lives and that, according to new chronology, he is where you would expect to find Joseph? Good question. In Genesis 41, verse 45, um, we are told that Pharaoh called Joseph's name Joseph Zaphenath Paneah. Dr. Kenneth Kitchen states that Zaphenath has a consonant sequence well known in Hebrew but not in Egyptian. But the last part, Paneah, is widely recognized as containing the Egyptian word Ankh. So, Joseph Zaphenath Paneah would be translated Joseph who is called Ankh. The Brooklyn papyrus I mentioned earlier has 28 names fitting into this name pattern of X Semitic name, who is called Y. So in summary, there is a late 12th, early 13th dynasty vizier called Anku, who seems to serve around the time of great plenty, then great famine in Egypt. Granaries are named after him, and he is popular, especially with Asiatics, he himself being Asiatic. At this same period, there is also a small settlement in northern Egypt in the Nile Delta of Asiatics from the Syria area. The Syrian house at the center of this 70 to 100 person settlement gets demolished, and an Egyptian style palace is erected in its place. The occupants are not Egyptian, but are northerners. The graveyard has lots of tombs, but 12 main big ones. One is a pyramid, and has a very important man with red hair and yellow skin and a throw stick. Is this man Anku? Experts seem to connect his statue with Amenemhat III, and thus making it likely that he and Anku are connected, possibly the same man. The Bible also describes a young Asiatic rising to power in Egypt at the time of great plenty, then great famine, who moves his family of about 70 members total into Goshen, and that he raises his family in Egypt as second to Pharaoh, and that Pharaoh called him Ank. I'm not saying definitely this is definitely Joseph, but it would be hard to find a better candidate. I hope this was interesting and encouraging to you. But remember, the question is not, can we prove everything in the Bible? The question rather should be, where there is archaeological evidence, does it in fact support biblical witness or not? Thank you for watching.